Hi, my name is Jeff Solheim with Solheim Enterprises, and welcome to our Trauma Certified Registered Nurse or TCRN exam review course. Let's talk about some unique considerations in caring for the older patient. We have to talk about low energy falls for a minute or ground level falls. Now, I think a lot of us have had this driven home over the years, and we know that ground level falls can be deceptively serious. And we do call trauma activations now on ground level falls. Um, when, some, when, a, when an older person falls um, and, and injures themselves, it, even though it's just ground level, it can be, have serious trauma. In fact, statistically, 40% of elderly who fall ground level, so just, you know, they, they just fall over in their home, 40% will not return to their home. In fact, 25% of them will be dead within a year. So ground level falls can not only cause severe trauma, but they can have long-term implications on the elderly patient. Now, why do elderly people fall? Well, for any number of reasons. It could be syncope doing to, due to dysrhythmias or orthostatic hypotension from uh, medications. It could be due to alcohol. Um, it could be due to changes in postural stability or balance that have to do with aging. It just could be due to the fact that reaction time slow as we get older could be due to altered visual acuity or visual attention. But the bottom line is, if the patient falls, consider that to be a major trauma and work them up with a full primary and secondary survey. Also consider the fact that sometimes when the elderly fall, they may not be found right away. So that could increase the risk of pressure ulcers, rhabdomyolysis, and other complications that we talked about in the orthopedic section of this series. So some general um, geriatric trauma considerations. Rib fractures are far more common in the elderly due to osteoporosis. And we know that as we get older, we have less respiratory reserve. So in the elderly, if they have rib fractures and they, um, they splint um, in, in an effort to try to reduce pain and they quit coughing, that combined with the poor respiratory reserve can often lead to respiratory infections. And single rib fractures carry a high mortality rate in the elderly population. So in the chest trauma section, we talk a lot about managing their pain after rib fractures. Well, those efforts need to be increased in the elderly who are at a much higher risk for secondary respiratory complications. Also, minor head injuries are more likely to cause disability and death in the elderly patient, sometimes because they're under anticoagulants, but also because of atrophy of the brain, their um, symptoms may be not um, as obvious, symptoms of intracranial pressure may not be as obvious early on, and then delays in, in that can lead to, um, uh, can, can lead to uh, more serious blood accumulations and bleeds. Overall, as we get older, we have less total body water. Um, so we don't store as much body water, and that's why you see the skin of the elderly so dry and, you know, um, they, they have more wrinkles and so on because they, they just have less body water. But that also means that they're, they're at a higher risk of both dehydration and hypovolemia because they don't store as much body water. As we get older, we lose our subcutaneous fat. So that means that we're not able to hold heat in as well. And um, the elderly adults are more prone to hypothermia. And that leads to that trauma triad of death that I talked about in the sepsis, SERS, and MODS module. It also increases the risk of skin breakdown. Doesn't this make you all want to grow older just listening to what's going to happen to us over the years? So a few things to consider when resuscitating the elderly patient. Now, in the sepsis, SERS, and um, MODS module, I really talked a lot about the current recommendations for fluid resuscitation and how much fluid to give. In the elderly population, while those standards should still be followed, we tend to use smaller fluid boluses with the elderly because they're at a higher risk for um, heart failure. They may need more fluid than their younger counterparts because they have less fluid, but they may have to um, have the fluid given at a slower rate to reduce heart failure. So we tend to use smaller fluid boluses, assess for pulmonary edema and signs of heart failure before another fluid bolus. Also, if the patient is on an anticoagulation medication, you may need to consider vitamin K or another coagulant to reverse the effects of anticoagulants and reduce the risk of intracranial bleeding. Another thing to consider with the elderly population is polypharmacy and how that may affect their response to both trauma and trauma resuscitation. A lot of our elderly population is on beta blockers for cardiac conditions. Now, beta blockers are going to block 
beta-1 and beta-2 stimulation. And remember, beta-1 and beta-2 stimulation is what helps us compensate for blood loss. So an elderly on a beta blocker may have a, a diminished ability to compensate for um, blood loss. And that, number one, can mean that they can become more seriously ill quicker with hypovolemia. But number two, the classic symptoms that we look for of shock like tachycardia and tachypnea and sweaty skin may not occur in the elderly population because their beta blockers are blocking that system and blocking that response. Of course, our elderly could be on anticoagulants, which can increase the risk of bleeding both after trauma and after um, interventions like you know, central line insertion or operative procedures. Um, your elderly population on diabetic medication for your type 2 diabetes is going to put them at a higher risk for hypoglycemia. So measuring blood sugars during resuscitation and, and, and then during their inpatient stay becomes more important. And if they're on any meds that are CNS depressants, that can not only increase the risk of falls and injury, but when you're doing a neurological assessment, it could alter their neuro assessment. So you have to consider all the meds the patient's on when caring for that for any patient, but especially the elderly population who could be a polypharmacy 